Amit? Okay. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the session, the second session of career choices in healthcare. We have Divya Apia, who is an anesthetist and will be sharing her ex experience. I'll be your moderator, so please feel free to ask questions in the chat and we'll get to them at the end. I'll let Divya take over and start. Thank you, everyone. Um, welcome again. My name is Divya. I'm a nurse anesthetist. And today I'm going to be talking about how what one can become a nurse and even an advanced practice nurse. Um, below is my email address and I'll share that again at the end of the presentation so you guys can reach out whenever you want. Um, let's see how I can go. Okay. So um, again, I just want to clarify with everyone, I have personal pictures on this presentation. So um, please no screenshots. Um, and I think Kosili Anti or Shitalanti can send out a copy of this exact presentation with no pictures um, where you can where you can share things as well. Um, again, you can write down your questions on the chat and I can answer. This is very casual, but also informative and everybody, including families are very much welcome. Um, this is the overview of what I'm gonna talk about today. I'm gonna talk about the roles and responsibilities of a registered nurse, um, what one needs to do or can do in high school to become a nurse and what it means to have a bachelor's of science in nursing and the licensure that goes after. Um, finding a job, then what a future looks like, and if one wants to go into higher practice, higher education, um, one can receive a master's of science in nursing and even a doctorate. So um, first, I wanted to clarify that there is a bachelor's of science in nursing and there's an associate degree in nursing. They're both different. Um, they both require different levels of education and time, the timeline is also very different. So um, I have, I received a bachelor's of science in nursing and that I would consider the more advanced degree, obviously. Um, for a bachelor's of science in nursing is about three to four years and associate degree is about 20 to 24 months. Um, so if, you know, financially an associate degree is obviously cheaper and you get through school faster. Um, and you can, at the end of receiving an associate degree and a bachelor's degree, become a registered nurse. So at the end, you do become a registered nurse, but um, it's important that people who hire you as a registered nurse will look at your education. They will see if you have a bachelor's degree or an associate degree. And nowadays in this competitive field of nursing, where um, there are a lot of jobs out there, a lot of uh, employers are looking for a bachelor's degree, but I did put a, a breakdown of what each degree looks like and the pros and cons of each. Um, bachelor's degree is definitely longer, more expensive, but you get a really great job afterwards and it um, has a good reputation. Um, let's see. Okay, let's go to the next. Um, and then once, you've graduated from, from an associate degree or bachelor's degree, you can become a registered nurse. There's also an option to become a licensed vocational nurse. Um, I just wanna clarify that there are so many ways to become a nurse and that's what makes this presentation a little more challenging to give because there are so many ways to become and your timeline can look totally different. But I wanted to, kind of help you all in understanding those avenues. And also there's tons of information out there on, on the internet. But um, there's a position called registered nurse and a licensed vocational nurse. Um, and so I want to clarify what those two mean. A licensed vocational nurse is very much focused on the skills portion of nursing. So doing all of these skills portion means placing an IV, placing a Foley catheter, doing blood draws, giving medication, things like that, very kind of um, skills oriented, clerical oriented position. Um, but a registered nurse does all of that, plus has um, more of a nursing clinical assessment and judgment portion of the, of the job. Um, so to be a registered nurse means that you have a higher level of expertise in the field. You are able to practice your judgment and do a full assessment of the patient and come to a conclusion. And that portion that thinking part, that decision-making part of nursing does not apply to a licensed vocational nurse. So as a registered nurse, I can look at a patient, I can assess the patient, 
I can make a judgment of, you know, what are my priorities in taking care of this patient because I'm a registered nurse with a bachelor's degree. Both positions require a, the similar licensure exam, but um, responsibilities are different. Um, and then I talk about a little more about what it means to be a nurse. Um, a lot of, when I grew when I was growing up, I always thought of a nurse like the one who takes my blood pressure and my weight when I go to the doctor's office. It was much more than that. And I learned that just going through school in the hard way, no one really told me that beforehand. Um, it's all about being the patient's advocate. That's how I describe being a nurse. Um, in hard times, when people are going through hard times, you are the one who is taking care of them. You are the one by their side and you are the one trying to advocate what they want. Um, doctors come and they are the expertise in their field as well, but you are expertise in how you take care of them. Um, so I put on, put holistic, compassionate, safe care is our priority. Um, you, you don't have to, but a lot of nurses do deal with death and dying. Um, I worked in an intensive care unit for a few years and I experienced a lot of death and dying, um, which puts a toll on you as a person, but may, helps you grow as a person as well. Um, and that's a very special part of my position as a nurse. You work with patients and their families. I've worked with kids and I've worked with their, their very anxious parents. And being a nurse also means you take care of them too, because um, I can't imagine what it's like for a mom to go through something intense where your kid is sick in the hospital. Um, a lot of responsibility and liability goes with being a nurse. Um, when During my education, I took a couple of classes that talk about the liability and responsibility portion. You do have malpractice insurance. Um, you are liable for everything you do and say for your patients. Um, and that's why... Um, you record everything on electronic health care, but there is a lot of responsibility in being a registered nurse. Um, I already said patient is a priority. You are their voice and sometimes their only voice. I took care of patients who couldn't speak for themselves. They were so sick and I was the one that was there speaking for them and helping them get through, um, you know, being in the intensive care unit and being very sick. Um, and as a registered nurse, um, I found that I was a very critical and respected part of the team. Um, growing up in an Indian culture, uh, a lot of immigrants know nurses the way they know nurses the way they practice in India. And in India, nurses practice very differently. They perhaps don't have such a respected uh, reputation in the healthcare field. But here in the United States, um, working in many institutions, I definitely felt um, a very respected part, critical part of the team. And doctors definitely look up to me sometimes. They, they ask me what, what's a good step for the patient or what's a good plan for the patient because I'm there all the time for them. So um, yeah. Next, I'm gonna talk about kind of the timeline. So, um, you know, what, what can one do in high school? What does undergrad look like? what um, the licensure looks like, the job hunt, and then beyond. So I do it in chronological order to help you guys out, and hopefully that all makes sense. Um, okay, so in high school, which was like 10 years ago for me, 10 years plus, I will try my best to remember what I did to help me get into the program. I went to University of San Francisco for my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Um, in high school, uh, I recommend anyone to do anything health related, um, volunteer at a hospital, do any leadership position in any club organizations that are health oriented in your high school. Um, also taking classes that show that you're interested in the field. Um, I took honors anatomy and physiology. Um, not all high schools uh, offer such classes. Um, I took AP Biology, AP Statistics, and Honors Chemistry. Statistics and Chemistry are actually very related to nursing as well. So all those classes were directly related to my interest in nursing. And the programs do look at what classes you took and how well you did in them. Um, and let's say I took bio, regular biology sophomore year, but then I took AP Biology in senior year they see that kind of advancement, that interest um, kind of pushing yourself. 
I didn't get an A in AP biology, I got a B, but it shows that I pushed myself and I was interested in, in this field. So keep pushing yourself and, and universities really appreciate that. They really look in that. Um, also, I was involved in many clubs, many organizations, probably too many um, now that I look back, but I was a mentor and a board member of Science Alliance, which is also science oriented. And I was in, I was, that was my leadership role. Um, marching band is not healthcare related, but I was a big, big, um, it was a big role in my high school career. I was a drum major, I was a lead coordinator, all that stuff. That shows leadership, that shows, um, you know, putting yourself out there, being vulnerable and, and taking on those roles. And then I listed some other things that I did too. So at the end, you got to think to yourself, what makes you stand out? Nursing is actually getting very, very competitive. I, um, from the time I started my University of San Francisco career to the time I ended and graduated, um, the people getting in had higher GPAs, had higher um, SAT scores, um, were smarter and smarter every year. So things are getting competitive. So beyond numbers, what makes you stand out? Why do you want to do such a field? And your essays will help. And also the types of classes and leadership positions will really help. Um, okay, so I, um, I started to think about how I can present this portion of my presentation. Um, I applied to many colleges, many universities in their programs and all their programs had very different structures. Um, so it's important to know that. Uh, in general, Bachelor's of Science in Nursing is three to four years. The University of Washington has a great program and that's in Washington State. The thing is they have something called pre-nursing um, where for the first two years you take general courses and if you do well, you apply to their nursing program and do it for the last two years. So you're not necessarily guaranteed to go and get a bachelor's of science in nursing at the University of Washington, but um, you know, there's, they have a very specific track. Um, some universities have interviews. I got an interview from the University of Pennsylvania. Um, some universities have scholarships. So I got a really good scholarship from the University of San Francisco and that was based on all numbers. Um, a GPA, an AC, they look at GPA and your ACT or SAT score. Um, and those numbers are on their website, but I didn't put the numbers on because um, SAT, their scoring system completely changed from since I took it. But um, I got a really good scholarship and I got a private education for the same price of a public education at a, a University of California UC system school. And my class size, I looked at very closely when I was looking into colleges and my class size maximum throughout my career at University of San Francisco was 40, 35 to 40 people. And so I really looked into that. Um, everybody's learning styles are different for me. I'm the one that sits in the front seat and try not to get distracted by everybody else. And so it was really important to me that I have a small class size and I have um, personal connections with all my professors. They all knew my name. They all knew what I wanted to do. They all helped me throughout my career. And that to me is really important. Um, you can also go to community college. Um, you can do two years in community college and transfer into a program that accepts such students and do another couple of years and get a bachelor's of science degree. Um, you, let's say you already finished a bachelor's in another, in another field and you wanted to switch into nursing. Like let's say you did a bachelor's of science, which is a general bachelor's of science in biology, but you want to do nursing. There are programs that help you transition and um, get a nursing degree. So that's what a BS to a master's entry level program looks like. Um, there's also accelerated programs where you can um, be in a program for about 12 months to two years, a very compact program. And those are usually, um, there's, there's a lot of them, they're usually online. Um, and a lot of my friends who did such programs had previous degrees in something else. And they went into an accelerated program to become a nurse quickly because they found that nursing has great job security, you get good money, you get to be with people and you get to do great service for our country. Um, so a lot of people went through the accelerator program. Um, I talked, to, I wrote a little bit about the classes you would take. You would take pharmacology, that's very important. 
critical care, you learn about obstetrics, so laboring mothers, you learn, learn about pediatrics, so people of all ages, um, old people, young people, newborn babies, you'll learn about. Um, you do go to the hospital and do clinical rotations. Um, you start doing that, at least I started doing that in my program my second year, and I would go to UCSF, which is a big hospital in San Francisco. And um, you go to all kinds of units um, and take care of all kinds of patients, obviously of every age group. Um, they do say every day is a job interview. And I will say that a lot probably because um, every day you're in the hospital, they do look at you as a possible uh, recruitment, as in a possible employee of their unit. So even you know at a young age in your career, you still put on a professional uh, presentation and you work hard and that will definitely show. Um, I can tell you now for the job I currently have, I did not do a job interview because I took that that saying every day is a job interview and they looked at how hard I was working um, as a student. And so that's a really unique thing because you're, you yourself don't need to go to a job fair because every day in clinical is, is kind of like a job fair. Um, I also did an internship. Um, my university did not help me find summer internships, which was really frustrating. So I went on my own uh, search and found a couple internships. I was um, a nursing aide at a pediatric clinic between my second and third year in my nursing program. And then between my third and fourth year, they always say that internship between your third and fourth year, your third and final year is very important. And I was a nurse extern in Houston, Texas at MD Anderson Cancer Center, which I found on my own. I applied on my own, I interviewed on my own. I'm just telling you there are things out there on the internet and sometimes you do need to go on your own and find things. Um, and my parents helped me too. So don't find yourself kind of alone in this journey. There are a lot of people that helped you, that will help you. Um, and what else? Oh yeah, during my university um, career, I was part of also lots of nursing clubs, lots of leadership positions, lots of volunteer work and all that is extra, but it really shows how committed you are to this field and it definitely keeps you on the competitive level when looking for jobs. Okay, that was a lot of information, um, but we're gonna keep going, okay? Um, do you need any additional training with your university, in, in addition to your university education to become a registered nurse? No, the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing program will completely prepare you to find a great job. There is nothing more that you need to do. One can do the bare minimum uh, classes, get bare minimum passing grade, and you still get a great job. But if you want a better job than that, you do all the things that I've listed before. You commit to yourself and becoming, um, participating in groups, clubs, leadership positions, volunteer work. There's always extra commitments that you can do. And if you do such things, you'll get a great job. I got the um, my first job out of, my undergraduate university education was at UCLA in Los Angeles in the intensive care unit, which is a very respected job. So if you do all the great things and even more go above and beyond, you will find a wonderful job. And they were very sad that I left for my master's degree, but I loved my position there. And on the right is actually a picture um, of one of our attending doctors during the COVID pandemic. My unit was converted to um, the COVID unit. And so it was only COVID patients, um, very, very sick patients, and they have great morale. They had a dance every time they um, took a breathing tube out of someone, which that breathing tube helps people breathe um, if they can't breathe for themselves. So when they got better and they got the breathing tube taken out and they could breathe with their own, they had a little dance. So um, I wanted to share that because I thought that was really cool. And you work with such cool people. These doctors in this picture still today are like people I talk to and are good friends of mine, even though I left UCLA years ago. Um, you have a great team. They, they're they the ones that respect me and they're the ones that look up to me when things go downhill for a patient. We all talk about it like a holistic care should be like. Um, and then after graduation, before becoming a registered nurse, you do have to take this licensure exam called the NCLEX. 
and that will get you your degree certification and you need that certification before starting to practice. And your program, your university program will definitely prepare you for that licensure exam. So don't worry too much about that. Um, the fun part, finding a job. Okay, so after you graduate from a three to four year program, you get your bachelor's of science in nursing, or you can do an associate degree. The next portion is getting your NCLEX, which I talked about briefly. That's your licensure exam. And then you start finding jobs or you can find jobs before getting your licensure exam. Um, the earlier, the better, because there are a lot of jobs out there and there are a lot of opportunities um, out there. There's so many types of ways to practice as a nurse and so many different workspaces. You don't have to work in a hospital is what I'm trying to say. I worked at a hospital and I still do, but you do not have to when you're a registered nurse. You can work at a clinic. You can do travel nursing. My friends have done travel nursing where they go from state to state. They get a travel assignment and those are young people usually. And they don't have kids, they don't, they're not married and they're just traveling from state to state and they get great money. And also you get to travel for your job, which is great. Um, you can go into research, you can go into infection control. One of my friends, she, um, she wanted to do something more clerical management role. And now she works as an infection control manager where she helps um, hospitals better control certain infections that can brew inside of hospitals. So she goes to every unit and tries to better their infection control, which is awesome. Um, you can be a home health nurse. You can go to people's homes and take care of people who can't take care of themselves. Um, and you can go to many homes and that can be your job too. There's so many different types of nursing. Um, you have flexible hours. Um, you can work, some moms that I know work nights so they can take care of their families in the morning and send their kids off to school in the morning and they work just nights. You don't work every night, they work three nights a week and that is considered a full-time job. You can work, um, you can work weekends. And uh, that, that, is, that is an option too. Um, I worked 12, uh, sorry, let me get rid of this. Um, I don't know why this is coming up. Okay, um, you can work weekends, you can work nights. I, as a registered nurse, worked three 12 hour shifts a week. So I actually had four days a week where I didn't work and I actually traveled a lot and had a lot of free time. And I still was considered a full-time, uh, it was still considered a full-time job and I got great pay. There's great numbers here on the screen for you guys. Um, under You can start understanding how much a nurse can get. Um, starting salary, it would be around like the median range in this table. Um, that's how much I started to make when I got out of college. Um, and if you keep working as a registered nurse, you gain years of experience, you can get over a hundred K. And that's, um, and that can actually differ from state to state. Um, if you look on the right, I put a map of the entire US and what the average nurse salary looks like. Um, as you can see, California is the highest um, and so is Hawaii because of the cost of living, simply because of the cost of living. Um, okay, next slide. Um, so what does the future look like as a registered nurse? This part is fun to talk about. Um, like I said, you have a very secure job. You have great benefits, especially during this COVID pandemic. People who were once retired as a registered nurse got back into the field to help out during this pandemic. We will always need nurses. Um, you don't have the loans that doctors have, which is great, um, uh, wonderful news. <laughs> um, you get great pay and that increases with years of experience and you have great benefits as well. Um, you have opportunities to get additional certifications which, which can increase your pay. Um, I got a critical care certification because I worked in a critical care unit. You have opportunities to lead. I led a group for pain management at UCLA. Um, so there's definitely opportunities to lead 
projects to lead if you need if you feel like you where you work has some quality improvement needs you have opportunities to lead there you have opportunities for international service trips i haven't done one but um, my coworkers, um, they do have a trip where they go to Punjab area in India and they do um, surgeries for kids with scoliosis with back issues. So they do this every year. They go with one of their doctors and they um, perform anesthesia for kids in India, which is awesome. Um, you have very flexible hours. Like I said, you can even do travel nursing and you have a very flexible lifestyle. You don't have to do nursing in a hospital. You can do it in a clinic. You can take on a management role. There are so many different types of nursing. Um, and you can, you if you feel like you wanna do higher education and become an advanced practice nurse, you can, but you don't have to. I became an advanced practice nurse. I became a nurse anesthetist, but there are so many different types of advanced practice nursing listed below. Um, you can become a nurse practitioner. You can become a nurse midwife where you deliver babies. You can work in management. You can work in research. A clinical nurse leader mostly works on quality improvement in the hospital. Um, you can become a nurse educator. Um, I found out very quickly that nurse educators for patients with diabetes get paid really well because diabetes is a huge chronic disease that is affecting more and more Americans every year. Um, so demand is always there for nursing, like I said. Um, you can also work in public health, um, especially during the COVID pandemic. You could, have, you could help with transmissible diseases um, in communities that need the most help that are mostly underprivileged. All right, and these are pictures of me um, in our simulation lab. Um, I am, <laughs> that's fake blood, that's like, it's really funny. Um, that's all fake blood, fake human beings that I'm poking with, um, but I'm putting in an arterial line, a central line, pretty advanced stuff. But this is during my advanced um, practice nursing degree. During my master's degree, this is what I did. Um, yeah, I thought that was fun to share. So I will quickly talk about master's of science in nursing. I know most of our people are high schoolers and this is um, years and years from now if you want to do it. So uh, you don't, I'm not putting this as a priority, but this is an option. Um, I went to Samuel Merritt University in Oakland, California, and that was a 28 month program for a master's of science in nursing where I became a nurse anesthetist. So that's a hard word to say nurse anesthetist, but I basically do anesthesia for people going into surgery. So I pe put people to sleep and give them um, a comfortable experience and they wake up after surgery and hopefully they're comfortable. So that's what I do for my job now. I work in a hospital, I work in an operating room. I also do epidurals for laboring mothers. Um, I do nerve blocks so I can numb up your whole arm if you're getting a surgery on your arm. Um, I do really cool things. And so this is what I wanted to do. Um, while I was practicing as a ICU nurse. And that is definitely an option for people if they want to advance their career. Um, there are other programs at Cal State Fullerton in Southern California, um, National University, which is also in Central Valley of California, and then Baylor, um, which is in uh, Texas. And there's tons of other programs, but those are the programs I applied to. Um, I did have to complete some prerequisites before getting into the program. Like I said, statistics and chemistry are very related to nursing. I did physics, I took the GRE, and I, um, they also looked at my GPA, and I did some special certifications to get in. Um, very similar to my undergraduate career, my master's in nursing career um, required a lot of clinical time. I was in the hospital a lot, up to four days a week. Um, and. Like I say, every day is a job interview when I'm in a hospital. Um, how you present yourself, um, if you stay late and help out the staff, if you um, go above and beyond and show your passion for nursing, they look at that. And like I said, for my current job, I didn't do a job interview. I literally was like, hey, I really wanna work here. Is there a job opening? And you know what they said? They said, we're gonna make a job opening for you. 
and that's how I got my job. So I went, you know, hopefully they see that I went above and beyond and um, I went out of my way and got a job. So things like that can happen for sure. That is a picture of me after I studied super, 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 super hard for my certification to become a nurse anesthetist. And in the bottom in blue letters, it says pass, which was probably one of the greatest days of my life. And that's me in my car about to cry. I didn't cry though. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is my, uh, my friends in the program of my nurse anesthesia program. Um, and those are my directors. We actually have lots of fun. That's us socializing. Um, and they're really cool people. You get to have lots of friends. I grew up in a household of engineers and I wanted to find a career where I can work with people and I can move around and I can feel, you know, that kind of fulfillment of service of uh, helping people who can't help themselves. And nursing is exactly where I found that fulfillment. And it's obviously not for everyone, but I hope that you um, either invest interest or found interest through this presentation and that um, this can be a great career for someone out there um, and I would be so excited if you wanted to chat with me that's my email address you can definitely send me um, you know if you want help with resumes if you want help with networking with other nurses and um, like I said and there's many types of nursing if you want to find someone in a specific field of nursing or you can just chat with me um, I would be excited to do that and and anyone have questions? I guess we can go to Emmett if anyone has questions right now. Hi, my Arotamu Mikusu to Arotam Sangas. Ah, Sango Sango. Ah, okay. My Atotora Kamu Satakai to the hospital moto on the surgical section of Taito, the legit to surgery assistant can raha, many men to care to read my. What a position. Um, me anesthesia ke less at the mingan kuchi. Sorry, hi. So, okay. um, more position is only anesthesia. The less specialist. Okay. The less specialist. The less more specialty. Um, the stramingan in the operating room, the stramingan have different specialties. Okay. Everybody is okay. trained to do something. Okay, to kare yalla choose kere tamai. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yalla specifically yalla. Answer my but I'll try. Okay. Um, okay. I wanted to do anesthesia because there is a certain level of critical care thinking. There's a certain level of independence as well. I'm an independent practitioner when it comes to anesthesia. I make the calls. Like this is what we need to do to help the patient. This is what we're going to do, and I feel very independent. I'm giving. Okay. I'm giving medications. I'm giving treatment. I'm feeling very independent as a practitioner, okay. almost good, to good. a physician level. And um, that is what I liked a lot about this position. Awesome. And it's a specialty, um, but to be honest, my patients come out of anesthesia sometimes and I, be, I feel like I'm their best friend because <laughs> they're coming off of anesthesia and they're like, I had a, such a great time. Or they'll be like, <laughs> is surgery, uh, did we finish surgery already? I'm like, yeah, we're all done. And they're like, I so know, happy. they're so happy. I and know. That <laughs> makes me so happy. And that fulfillment is what drives me. That I can bring someone out of a huge surgery and feel like they made it. Okay, and good. Uh, I didn't mean to say that this is less or better or whatever. Just no. I just was curious. Yeah. That is fine. Why? So it's so very. I'm so proud of you to your capability. See, that you can hire the three of the little two or current seven or the two who's on tosh proud of our us. Yeah. I okay. So you have my medical field. Um, to jatam thadi undergrad course. Do sirka idhi kiri ske hale nursing feeling jatam thadi. No, I went straight from yeah. high school to um, a nursing program for four years. Very nice, very nice. So to all over California, Seattle. Is it Seattle in Seattle your college was? No, mine was in San Francisco, California. San Francisco. Okay, very good. The yeah. name sounded like something else. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I thought to work Okay. I right? work in the, I work moved back to Bay Area and I work in Bay Area right now. Ah, really? Yeah. All of the names sound so different. UCLA, Tanda, I know. Okay. I've traveled all okay. across California. Okay, good. I'm glad. Okay, but India to Jean Koti Keriska? No, that is, um, hopefully I am able, I'm very new to my profession right now. 
I just started working this year. So if I am able to just continue what I'm doing and then once I'm comfortable with my practice, I will definitely go abroad somewhere. Okay. Um, there are lots of problems. Okay. You don't have to, just, I'm just curious. No, that a lot definitely of doctors is one of my goals. Go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've seen a lot of doctors going to Velour, work in the hospital, Tele Madri. So I was just curious to know. Anyway, thanks, my dear. You're very welcome. Uh, You're very welcome. Uh, okay, next question. Can someone on uh, MedPat, not nursing, get uh, to intern as a nurse? So someone is on the path to become a medical doctor and they're in um, medical school. And there is, is their question asking, um, I guess their question is asking if you can intern as a nurse. Um, to become a nurse, there is a, uh, you have to go through a reputable program. You have to get a licensure exam. So there is no way that a medical doctor, a person training to become a medical doctor can intern as a nurse. To become a nurse, there are multiple steps, like I explained. So. Um, yeah, if you want to become a nurse, so you have to go through a program and you have to get a licensure um, and pass the exam. Uh, are there direct admit uh, programs super competitive to get into? How does one stand out to get in this program? Um, hold on. Let me... What is the question again? Are direct admit programs super competitive to get into? How does one stand out to get in this program? Yeah, so um, my program at the University of San Francisco is, I guess, considered a direct admit. You are directly admitted into the nursing program and they start nursing courses right away. Um, and that is really competitive. Um, and I think if you show that you specifically are interested in nursing, whether that be through your essay whether that be through your volunteer positions that you've done through high school um, or the classes that you took that can help you stand out. Um, I was just so involved in almost everything at my high school, it felt like. Um, but uh, my essays showed that um, I'm a leader. I, I kind of find ways to help lead and I kind of put myself out there. I don't find opportunity. I mean, I don't, um, look for opportunities, I kind of like make opportunities for myself and that kind of helped me stand out. Um, find your own way of showing it and that's really hard to, to do, it's easy to say, but um, push yourself definitely um, and uh, have your parents help out in finding such opportunities to volunteer. And um, if you're really passionate about something in high school right now, like I was really passionate about marching band and instrumental music, I found leadership positions within there and I challenged myself and I related that to nursing in my essay. So it wasn't even nursing related, but I showed that passion in marching band and related that to the passion I have for nursing. So I made kind of a connection and maybe that helped me stand out. Unfortunately, universities don't get back to you and tell you why they accepted you. <laughs> so that's what I'm guessing how I got accepted. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. I think we're done. No more questions. Okay. Um, but if you do, just, just uh, type it Sorry. in the chat. Um, Amit, so mm -hmm. the, the presentation was excellent. I really love your the way you put all the things together. I think you you know thought through this a lot. I mean, you know, I don't remember. I mean, talking about all these points, but it looks great. Thank, Thank you, you for taking the time and yeah, working on it. I know you were busy, but this is good. This is good. Thank you. Um, this is a company guy. The question say, yeah. Yeah, I really love this. There is so much of information that I want to be a nurse now. <laughs> you know, I, your, it was so more, I mean, inspiring. And yeah, the, you know, and you more of more than the presentation. I can see the passion, uh, yeah. the passion, how she has put into it. Uh, that itself is so much that, no really I really feel that I should if I would it, right? yeah it's amazing it's amazing and um, um, I, if you don't mind me asking Divya the mm. usual canoe, uh, parents or, and even kids you know they're like Dr. Hono 
right? Mm -hmm. That that is the usual thing. So Kornalavarastunga, we know if you had a chance to become a physician versus this, I mean, what do you see the positive side of becoming a nurse versus, mm -hmm. you know, spending all those 14 years or whatever years to become a specialist? Yeah, um, I definitely becoming a doctor was an option for me. Even when I went into undergrad, people were saying, oh, are you going to eventually be a doctor? Like, is this a way to become a doctor? Um, and even like my immediate family kept at clarifying, like, is this really wanna, what you want to do or you want to become a doctor? Um, I, I was, I'm very stubborn, me as a person, and I'm very... <laughs> passionate too about what I do and I will stand for what I believe for so I did I sure. stood up for this profession and um and I think I took this as an opportunity to teach people what it means to be a nurse um and also like I can't help I can't blame them for pushing me or thinking that being a doctor was best for me because they don't know much about the nursing field when I say they people of who immigrated from India um, and it was kind of an opportunity for me to teach them what it means to be a nurse, um, build respect in the Indian community for nurses. Um, and it was a great opportunity. And I think I shared a lot of the things I shared with you all with, with my family and the uncles and aunties that my parents hang out with and all that. And I, 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 I think they see how I feel fulfilled in this profession. Um, and I think this COVID pandemic also has opened a lot of people's eyes on what it means to be a nurse. Right. And, and you know, think about all the flexibility um, and you finish your education quicker. There's so yeah. much, you know, positive <laughs> things to this. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. I actually, when I was leaving my uh, job at the ICU at UCLA, I was telling my uh, my physicians, my uh, doctors that I worked with that I was leaving to do my master's in nurse anesthesia. And most of them were like, man, I wish I did what you're doing right now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're a doctor already. And they're like, yeah, but like, you don't need to spend so many years in school and so many years in residency. You get a great salary coming out of school already and you don't have the loans and all that. And I was like, oh, interesting. And I do very similar I do, my roles and responsibilities are very similar to an anesthesiologist. And so I already feel very, um, at a young age, I feel very uh, kind of, I feel like a professional in this field already. And I'm sure so you are, that. you are. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. We have a question in the chat, Amit. Cool. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. Um, the question is for BSN, uh, there's a two year, three year and a four year program. Which one's the best? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, it really depends on how you are as a learner. A two-year program will be very fast-paced um, and it will be very compact. There's so much content to cover. Um, so a two-year program is trying to cover four years worth of content to two years. So it's squishing all that together. Also, you don't have a lot of time in the hospital to practice. Um, and I think what I emphasize most is gonna be your education in a hospital. You can read a book over and over and over again and become an expert in the textbook nursing, but bedside nursing in a hospital, it can be very different. Um, so if a two year program will mean it's more compact and definitely more rigorous and you have less time in a hospital, but four years, everything is a little more spread out and you get more time in a hospital. I would, if you feel like nursing is the way to go and you are confident or somewhat confident, I would say go for a four-year program um, because uh, at a young age, like when I graduated from high school, I don't think I was going to be prepared for what a two-year program entails. Um, having it spread through four years was very nice. It was the right amount of speed for learning my content and I got a lot of time in the hospital to practice. Um, so I recommend for you, if you're confident in that nursing is for you, um, and if you find that maybe later in your, after studying something else, if you feel like nursing is now a good option, you can do it to your program. If you feel, if you feel like it's the right way for you, does that help answer? Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Then we, I think we're done 
course. Oh, never mind. Just one more. Yeah. Um, when looking for universities, do you choose based on the hours that they let you spend hands on? Um, when I was looking for universities, I didn't look. I, in retrospect, how I would look at universities is um, definitely I would look at how much time I spend in, in the hospital. Um, now that I've uh, entered the field of nursing and I have a lot of coworkers that went through different tracks, um, a lot of them went through accelerator programs and they come out and they are very smart, but they don't have a lot of uh, hospital time below their belt. And as a person in a four-year program, I was in a I I was in a hospital three out of the four years, and so that's a lot of valuable time, a lot of valuable experiences, and experience is is probably your your most valuable asset. So I would, if um, I would look into the programs and how long you do spend time in the hospital. I think that's very important. Um, and also uh, finding people within the program already, if you know people in the program or reaching out and asking questions during, um, uh, they have like, what is it called? Like op open fair or like open session to um, interested students, go ahead and like join those sessions. And you can ask a lot of questions about how much time they spend in hospitals what kind of importance do they put in clinical time is really important. In retrospect, I would definitely look at it that way. Um, sure, uh, on the, the comment I received, Priya, uh, she says, I work as HR for a home health agency and if everyone is interested, I can explain a little more about the job op opportunities. Um, Divya, if that's okay with you, um, shall we let uh, Priya speak? Yeah, that would be totally fine. Yeah. Sure. Priya, please go ahead. Me, I do. Hi, Divya. This is Swarna Bay here. <laughs> my, my full name is Swarna Priya, and I'm related to Divya. Oh, hi, uh, Divya. My dad. <laughs> uh, good job, Mai. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice so to meet you. Video um, on Tilatmana Kilwa, if you want. Oh, no, I'm not in a position. Sure, to sir, no problem. No problem. <laughs> right no problem. now. Yeah, I was not prepared at all. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so yeah, Kausalya Bhavi and uh, one more thing is I live at NC and we are very close friends to Karthik and Sangeeta. Just wanted oh, to let you okay, know. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Sure. So I work as a HR for a home health agency that's located in California. So as Divya said, like um, we uh, are always in search of RN, PT, OT, ST, medical social worker and uh, you know it's it's uh, RN is a really really great uh, profession and it has a lot of job opportunities especially these days there are a lot of home health agencies upcoming home health agencies and they get paid really well and the thing is like as Divya mentioned like it it's it's very flexible like um, the RN that works for our home health agency, she hardly works like two, three hours per day, mostly like office uh, clinical work. And then she goes, uh, sees the patient only a couple of times in a week, like maximum two to three hours. And you, and you know, the, the salary that she gets paid is really awesome. Like it's a lot of salary and it's a very flexible um, job opportunity, especially for the females. And um, yeah, if, if anyone has any questions, I can, I can answer you guys. Thank you so much, Priyanti. That was very nice. Thank you, Priya. A bay, I should call you bay. And Divya Mai, Jukku, Atta Ramana Madri, Shital Bay, Mana Madri. Atta 70 ho yiri ya ho, I'm like, ah, I'm going to choose I said, I'm going to ask you. Okay, that's not my cup of tea. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't have made it. Made it. <laughs> I know a lot of, I talked to a lot of students, not students, but high schoolers, and you know, they're interested in nursing, but they're like, I'm scared of blood, I'm scared no, of like man. needles and all that. <laughs> and I'm like, that's important to know. And I'm telling them, like, that doesn't mean you have to work with blood and needles all the time. 
You could work as management. You can work in research. You can work, you do need to work with needles and blood during your training, but that doesn't have to be what you do. Yeah, the training itself will kill them, I believe. Okay, you for, will, you yeah. can find a job that doesn't entail that um, and have still a secure job. There's just so many ways to practice nursing. Very nice, my Nijam was Saurashtra community mo at the first R and D guy to let our our US. I have another uh, nursing friend, a Saurashtra friend. Yeah, but Thank she's you. busy today. She couldn't come. Awesome, Santosh, my. <laughs> One last question: um, <clears throat> What happens during surgery? How is your interaction with the anesthet anesthesiologist? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Um, say, say the first part again, Amir. I don't know how. Uh, I what happens it. during a surgery? Uh-huh. And so, uh, how is your interaction with the anesthesi- uh, anesthesiologist? anesthesiologist. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I do during surgery, I can tell you what I tell patients, but um, there's different types of anesthesia. I can keep you moderately sedated, which means you're kind of just sleepy, taking a really deep nap, and they numb up the area they want to work on, and they work on you, and I give you medications for pain as well, but you're breathing on your own. You're kind of just in a deep nap state, or I put you under general anesthesia where you have a breathing tube. So general anesthesia can be for more intense surgeries where um, the stimulation is too much that you can't be under moderate sedation. So general surgery, I, um, I, I put people to sleep uh, using medications through someone's IV. So it goes straight to their bloodstream. They go to sleep, they become unconscious, and I put a breathing tube in to protect their airway. And I monitor their heart, I monitor their lungs. Throughout the surgery, I give them medications for pain based on their heart and their lungs and their blood pressure and their heart rate. And I give them medications for nausea as well because people can get very nauseous after surgery. Um, After the surgery is done, I get them, I turn off the sedation. I give sedation through either IV in their bloodstream or I give it through gas through their breathing tube. So I turn that off and I get them breathing on their own. I take the breathing tube out and they wake up in recovery um, when surgery is done. So that's what I do in a nutshell. I also do um, epidurals for laboring mothers. Um, and I also am part of C-sections if they need to go to C-section. Um, what is my role with anesthesiologists? So that is a very interesting question. Um, and it differs with each hospital I've realized. Um, some hospitals don't have anesthesiologists at all and it's only nurse anesthetists or in short, we call them CRNAs. Um, so that, those are usually smaller hospitals and usually in rural areas. Um, and I've been in a couple of those hospitals and CRNAs are completely independent and they practice on their own. Other hospitals where you go to more of like Kaiser hospitals or big teaching institutions, you'll find that anesthesiologists are much more involved in your practice. They are um, more or less supervising you um, and it has to do a lot of legality purposes that they have to supervise you. But if you build a good relationship with the anesthesiologist or you find a place where nurse anesthetists have a good reputation, you'll feel like an independent practitioner. Um, I've worked in hospitals where they really work side by side with you, which can be great if they're good people to work with, but sometimes personalities can clash or power dynamics can clash and can get really uncomfortable. But if you do your research and you know your training during your school will be a great time for research to find which hospital is a good fit for you. Are you one who wants to be completely independent practicing, practicing on their own? Or do you wanna work in a teaching institute where they kind of are side by side and share ideas with you and you kind of practice together? So um, their role in your practice can differ from state to state, hospital to hospital, and there's so many levels of interaction you can have with them. Okay, thank you. We're done with all the questions. Okay. Yeah, that's 
Awesome. That's, that's amazing. So, so if you have to work independently, you know, CRNA and there's no anesthesiologist, then your liability is, is even higher. Right? Correct. Yeah. If I'm practicing on my own, I'm definitely more conservative, more conscious of what I'm doing. I write down everything and anything that I'm doing for the patient. Um, because they say, if your case goes to a court, if something bad happens, they do look at anesthesia first and they need to see what you did. And so I, I'm very conscious about that. And um, liability is a big portion of my profession. So is, are the, the kind of surgeries, is it limited if you are the only one that's there in the hospital? Um, CRNAs can do surgeries on anyone and any, any type of surgery. We're not limited. But um, okay. the, the trend has been that a lot of cardiac surgeries, open heart surgeries, a lot of lung surgeries tend to go to anesthesiologists because they are they do a separate training for cardiology, cardiac surgeries. Um, so, and, and also with pediatric surgeries with kids, they go through a separate training anesthesiologist to do pediatric surgery. So in some hospitals, it, we can be a little limited because of that. Amazing, it's, it's an amazing profession. Yeah, uh, it's CRNAs yeah. are not very well known. It's a very specialized profession. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great, great profession though. Good, good. And you have, you have done excellent. I mean, just, <laughs> just from the presentation, I'm sure your parents are proud of you. And I know, good job. I don't know where they are at right now. <laughs> uh, Divya, I had one question. Uh, mm -hmm. So if somebody who is just doing a BSN and uh, they are taking a gap, is yeah. it easy for them to come back and uh, jump into a career or there is something they will still have to do uh, when they have a gap? So if you do a bachelor's of science in nursing and you want to take a gap, my recommendation is you get your license um, right away. And um, that's because you are so fresh out of education and everything is still very clear in your head. And that's what you're going to get tested on. So I would get your, um, take the NCLEX, which is called, which is the licensure exam, take it and get your certification saying you are a registered nurse. And if you want to take a gap after that, you can definitely, you can definitely take a gap. Um, some hospitals have something called a new graduate program, which hires um, people who just graduated and have less than six months of nursing experience. So those programs are usually in bigger hospitals. So if you want to work in a bigger hospital um, and you want to take a gap year, just look at these programs, these programs do want you like kind of fresh out of school um, and they kind of help you transition because they found that um, students who just graduated and are starting their first job, that transition can be really tough for them because they're taking on a lot more responsibility that they may not be used to as a student. So these new graduate programs actually help them in this transition, but you don't need to do that. You ha don't have to go into a new graduate program. You can definitely take a gap if you need to, and then find a position in any hospital, whether it be a hospital or a clinic or anything. Okay, yeah, that is great. And one can jump from one nurse profession to another, like one is in a pediatric and then now they want to go into NICU or mm -hmm. they want to jump into another thing. Do they have to do certain certain specific things or they can just um, jump into that? You can just jump into it. Um, like within a hospital, if you want to go to a different unit, you talk to the management, you talk about uh, your interest, and they some they usually have you shadow one of their nurses there for a couple of weeks or however long they feel like it until you're comfortable and you're on your own. There's okay. no extra um, certification or education you need to do to jump from uh, specialty to specialty. And what is the difference in being an e a nurse in an EMT uh, compared to the one in a regular hospital? Um, a nurse in EMT, uh, emergency care. Um, oh, in an ER, an emergency room. Yeah. Um, versus like any other place. Yeah. So someone in the emergency room, they um, they usually are. Their specialty has to do with triage, which means you know understanding if they're a low risk, medium risk, or a high risk that needs to be admitted. They look at your symptoms. They look to see um, how sick you are, basically, um, and what level of care you need at that time. Okay. Um, and they're kind of the first responders, too. 
Um, but a lot of their work has to do with prioritizing. If you have five patients and one has a runny nose and the other one has a heart that's about to stop, you prioritize that obviously. Right. But you have a huge level of um, responsibility in that. But it's, it's um, working in the emergency room is a re very respected profession because you have to deal with chaos a lot. And um, intensive care unit is different. It's chaotic, but it's like organized chaotic. <laughs> That's the way I call it. So you need an EMT certification too for that? No, you don't, no. No? You don't need extra certification to be in the emergency room as a nurse. And uh, how about the 911 one? And which one? The 911. Oh. oh, like to be an emergency. Oh, I think you're talking about one who was in like a, in the ambulances? Yes. Oh, okay, to be in a first responder in an ambulance is called the EMT. That's the profession's name. Oh, okay. Um, that actually, you do have a special training course for that, but um, you it has nothing to do with nursing. Okay. Um, okay. But a lot of nursing students, actually at our university, there was a training program to become an EMT and we had uh, students who were EMTs while they were studying in school. That's an opportunity, but it was such a hard program. It was very hard to do nursing at the same time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. My thought is speech mode. Come up, I understand those concluding comment. Okay. As kind of professional, I know it is a professional talk, but yeah. as a community well wisher, to what I style more, very good, much cope. You got to push hard. And be vulnerable, be humble, mm -hmm. watch with the guy. You can have awesome to a maturity set as you'll be a good one. <laughs> In pro professional, good luck. Anna. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think okay. I ever did the bare minimum anywhere, which takes a toll on you at some time. On the young can set it and the my year, I think we're going to get all the best. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so All questions right. asking Mujira since Amit Dusra Kadi Aurasta? No. No, okay. Okay. Thank you everyone for coordinating this and- Yes, thank uh, you to yeah. you too. It was, yeah. it is amazing and this information is gonna be staying in my head and <laughs> uh, definitely when somebody is asking, you are the one whom I'm gonna point to. Awesome, yeah, my email is there um, and I'd, I'd be very yeah. excited. I, I really uh, I really wish many people they join into this because I'm a volunteer at heart. Yeah, I like to serve people, uh, but that is a really great profession. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you take care, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it again. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you, you so much, for guys. Moderating. Uh, Good to see special you. Thanks to you for uh, joining us. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> moderator, Sadakai. I cannot believe that there are four-year-old fellow. There are one hundred or two hundred. They come to India. They will. I visit. Visit. I was so amazed. There are four people. One plus one to come. What are you? Asli, asli. They will take a much. Go, pay. Kai, can no. Amit. What are you doing? Amit. <laughs> Very right. nice. Okay, what a professional get organized. Karta Aurya Jyoti Santosh. Okay, Karna. Ata Aurya Tanka touch the Adi Kadi Aurya Tam Hazar Kari. Ata Kari. Okay, Karna. Ah, oh, circus. All right. Super. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay, Karna. Jilia Bye. Karna. Bye. Bye.